All right. <laughs> So today, I want to talk about what the doctors don't tell you when you're first injured. Basically, when you first get a spinal cord injury, the doctors are like, hey, you're never going to walk again. Here's your wheelchair. Best of luck to you. They don't tell you all the missing pieces in between. How can I treat this? How can I treat that? How can I, what do I need to do? How do I need to take care of my body? It's basically, here's your wheels. Go live your paralyzed life. And in reality, it's so important that we maintain the shell, even though it doesn't work. So today I want to talk about a few of the most important things I think doctors need to inform us about after a spinal cord injury. The first thing doctors don't tell you is that you have choices. You have choices about what pharmaceuticals you use, what catheters you use, the company that sends your catheters, what type of wheelchair you're going to use, how, how you want your wheelchair. They kind of make you feel like this is the way it has to be. This is what we do for everybody. So this is what's going to work for you. And in reality, we're all individuals and what works for someone else is not going to work for you. You have to find your own what's going to work. So it's very important that you advocate for yourself. You are your own best advocate within your spinal cord injury. So if someone tells you something and you don't feel comfortable with it or you're not quite sure, ask questions to find out why are you doing this? Why are we taking this course of action? The other thing that they don't tell you is how important it is to stand. Your bone density could start to decline rapidly. Even though I'm active and living life to the fullest, I was not standing enough and I lost a good amount of my bone density in my first two years of being injured. And it scared me. I, I'm like, if I lose too much of my bone density, one wrong move, I break my leg and my legs become twigs. And you know, that's, that's not fun. That's not something that I want to think about. So I purchased a standing frame from a support group and I actually stand in it uh, almost every day when I work and do schoolwork because it's so important that we put weight through our legs because we are sitting so much. It's, it's good to stretch. It's good to stretch out your ankles and get the weight bearing through your hips and ankles to maintain that bone density. Another thing that they don't tell you is how important they think just because you're not walking, it's not important to also maintain muscle mass. I use what's called wearable therapy. It's electric stimulation shorts. When I was in rehab, I used the bike. I did not like how the bike was not mobile. I love that I could take my axiogonic shorts with me anywhere I go. I have traveled across the country far and wide with them. I have used them since 2015 when I was initially injured. I use them almost every day to treat my spasms, my nerve pain, my tightness in my legs, and to maintain the muscle mass to prevent pressure sores, keep the circulation, stop my legs from swelling. I don't wear Ted hose because my legs don't swell. I don't have an issue with that because of the axiobonics verbal therapy is maintaining that circulation in my legs. The doctors are so quick to prescribe you a pill for this, this, and this. So, you know, you, they want to prescribe you a pill for your spasms, a pill for your nerve pain, a pill for your skeletal pain, a, per, a pill for your brain injury, a pill for your bladder spasms. And it's like the next thing you know, you have this handful of pills, but you could use a natural alternative in the electric stimulation and potentially get rid of a couple of those pills and not even start them to begin with. I mean, I've used electric stimulation since I was initially injured and I've never taken back with them. But in the same sentence, if I did not have my wearable therapy, within three days my legs are spasming so bad it's sending me over in my wheelchair, I could hardly transfer, and they wanted to prescribe me back with it. And I said, no, I'll figure something else out. And I did with the wearable therapy. And it's just frustrating that doctors are so focused on the medicine and this is the way it's gonna work that they're not gonna open their minds to alternative medicines and alternative therapies. A spinal cord injury, every single one is so different and they, they can't pinpoint how to fix it and how to make the nerves regrow and, and how to, to, to kind of generalize them across the board. So why are we not researching different things, trying different things? And it's just kind of frustrating that the first thing the doctors do for me in the hospital is they take all hope of life as a wheelchair user. So I'm here to tell you there's nothing to be scared of. You've got this. Uh, don't don't listen to what they say. You know, to to an extent. Obviously, you need to listen to what your doctors tell you when they're directing you medically. But 
Be sure to be your own advocate. If you don't like something that's going on in your medical treatment, you have the power to stop it. You have the power to say, hey, this is not the way I want this to go. We can change it or I'm gonna seek treatment elsewhere. And as long as you stay honest with your medical professional, stay up front, say this is what's going on, explain how your body's feeling, explain the different things. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna be your own best advocate. You know your body better than anyone else and you're gonna relearn your body as it changes. It just went through this traumatic injury, now it's gotta recover from the injury. And then you've gotta learn how to live life with the injury. And I think that it's not focused enough. Another thing that the doctors don't tell you is the mental struggles that you're about to endure are unlike anything you've ever faced in your life. There are gonna be days where paralysis is gonna continuously beat you into the ground. There are gonna be days where you don't wanna get out of bed. <laughs> there are gonna be days where you wanna quit more than anything. Where you feel that you can't, that you can't overcome this, that you can't get through this injury, and I'm here to tell you that you can. You have to make the choice, you have to get yourself out of bed, but you're gonna get through this. I promise, this injury, we're stronger than it. And together we will overcome this. For the mental support, I joined a lot of wheelchair support groups. I'm in a couple of all women's groups, including one I run called the Wheel Woman Hole. And it's just so empowering to have a network of people that understand exactly what you're going through. And I was joining support groups when I was still in the hospital, just because I wanted to learn as much about this injury as possible. I'm like, all right, so I was just paralyzed. Tell me everything I need to know so I can live life to the fullest, so I could still do everything I want to do and have that support of, if I'm having a bad day, I post in that support room like, hey guys, I'm really going through it today. Can you please just send me some positive vibes, shoot me a prayer. And the amount of people that are in your corner that understand exactly what you're going through, that, that community is irreplaceable. So don't forget you're your own advocate. Don't forget you have choices with everything. Look into alternative therapies and alternative medicines between electric stimulation, be sure to stretch, yoga, stretching. They do not take care of your lower extremities. Just because your body doesn't work down here doesn't mean that you don't take care of it. Stretch it, stand, do the electric stimulation, everything you can to maintain the muscle mass and maintain health in the extremities that aren't working. It's so, so important. important. It's still a part of your body. Don't forget that. And lean on each other for support. You have an entire community of people that understand exactly what you're going through. You are not alone. It does get easier with time, patience, and a little bit of work. So put a smile on and wheel with me. If you have any suggestions or additions or anything that you would like to add to this video, please comment below. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to share it. You never know who can need it.